My name is Tom Land, and this is the story of Lamarck, Mendel, Darwin, and the origin of the species. In 1801, the Chevalier de Lamarck came up with a new theory. It was inheritance through acquired characteristics. And it stated, if an organism changes during its life, those changes are subsequently passed onto their offspring. The adaptive force theory starts with use and disuse. The less you use a trait, it will slowly disappear until it's gone entirely, much like our appendix or vestigial tail. But vice versa, the more you use a trait, then the more it will become accentuated. Then comes the inheritance of acquired characteristics. If your trait is beneficial, you will pass it on to the next generation. Lamarck explains this with his theory of elephants. Once upon a time they had shorter trunks, and yet reaching food and water, they stretched and grew their trunks and then passed that long trunk trait onto their offspring. However, as we can see, muscly parents don't give rise to muscly babies, and if you chop off your arm, your offspring will definitely have a full complement of limbs. His theory is shaky. However, Lamarck set up the ideas for the gradual change and heritability of beneficial traits. Along with his comments on levels of complexity, Lamarck has set the stage. Fast forwarding past the publication of Origin of Species, we get to a man who's trying to figure out the mechanics behind it, Gregor Mendel. He evaluated 28,000 plants of the piece and genus to figure out four distinct laws which we still use today, even in medicine when we're trying to figure out whether a baby might have a genetic disease or not. And here are these laws. Law 1. Alternative versions of genes account for variations in inherited characteristics. These are alleles, this is what makes phenotypes different. Law 2. For each character, an organism inherits two copies, that is two alleles, of a gene, one from each parent. This is astonishing. DNA was still 100 years from being found, and chromosomes weren't even known to exist yet. Law 3. If two alleles at a locus differ, then one, the dominant allele, determines the organism's appearance. The other, the recessive allele, has no noticeable effect on the organism's appearance until perhaps the next generation. And finally, law four, the law of segregation. Two alleles for a heritable character segregate or separate from each other during gamete formation and end up in different gametes. On the 1831-36 expedition of HMS Beagle, Charles Darwin made landfall on the Galapagos Islands. Here, the most famous examples of evolution were found, Darwin's finches and the Galapagos tortoises. Based off teachings of Lamarck, the Comte de Buffon, Cuvier, Buckland, Mantel and Lyell, he had evidence and starts to write. But what is evolution and its driver? Evolution. Gradual change in allele frequency over time, driven by natural selection. A process resulting in the adaptation of an organism to its environment by means of selectively reproducing changes in its genotype. This mechanism allows changing morphologies, driven by mutations that Mendel at that moment was outlining. Variety in traits is caused by mutations. These mutations, if beneficial, mean the individual will survive more, and therefore reproduce more, pass on their alleles more, and selection is occurring. This is survival of the fittest. Today we recognise many forms of evolution and selection, from stabilising selection and directional selection to convergent evolution, like the wolf and the lion. These two are separated by 55 million years of evolution, and yet they look similar, not because of relation, but because of a similar lifestyle, similar hunting, and similar prey. The same can be said for fins, flippers, and flight. This is selection for the best solution. Divergent evolution is another example. You can see mutations occur, they accumulate, shape changes happen, and speciation occurs. This has happened with the garviel, the crocodile, and the alligator. And then we have adaptive radiation. One species will find a habitat with many empty niches, from tiny little changes in food, causing beak changes like in finches, to habitat changes, causing massive morphological changes. For example, the hyrax and the dugong. But different forms of evolution, we have anagenesis, when one species evolves into another, or cladogenesis, when one species branches off into two more. But the variety of evolution continues with allopatric speciation, sympatric speciation, and parapatric speciation. It's hard to put into words the beauty and infinite complexity of evolution. 
Through hundreds of years of observation and experiments, only now are we uncovering the secrets behind Earth's diversity. We've got better control with better understanding, from medicines like vaccines and antibiotics to food production. Quoting E.O. Wilson, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And quoting me, the origin of species is evolution.